Hey everyone, my name is Anders and today we're going to go over the latest developer stream. They had a few announcements, but mostly a lot of responses to the top Korean forum posts. So first, PA did officially announce a new player guide is coming. This is to help new players get used to the game mechanics and where to go in their progression path. We have some sites already that have good written guides like BD Foundry, for example, is one. And of course, a lot of YouTubers like myself make video guides, so we'll see how good the official guides end up being. Arena of Solari got some announcements as well. It's going to be a permanent mode and more rewards for Arena. The higher the rank you achieve, the more rewards you get. I'm not sure if this means after every match or after every cycle. Arena custom mode is also being implemented. This custom mode will allow you to have only invited players to play in matches and observe these matches. That's huge for the PvP community. Hopefully it's well done and flushed out and we can have some more structure community pvp events they're also planning on an arena of solari championship sometime this year i think they said uh, arsha channel changes where everyone will be auto flagged is still going through i think and they said platoons will not be allowed on arsha but you can make parties or stay solo if you want they don't want platoons in arsha because that many people will just clear everyone else on the channel some outfit changes were announced for the marshall outfit and a new farmer themed outfit will be releasing november 15 in korea i believe they said it was farmer themed and not for the farming life skill something to do with the day of farming celebration this month i like it personally i think it looks good they also mentioned the upcoming outfits will be for all male classes or all female classes they are not doing individual class outfits for a while for ocean content the guild galley update is coming soon first mate and sailor presets are also coming they mentioned how carrix took two to three years to develop some players want the back of the carrix to be removed seems to be more of a cosmetic issue they also understand that at a certain graphical setting nighttime sailing is hard to see so they thought about adding a lamp on the carrick but that's not possible looting with carrick is also sometimes an issue so they are working on both issues they're also looking to rebalance carricks but for now they're using the extra sailor slots as a way to mitigate the issue with some carricks being much better than others auto pathing was improved with the removal of reefs this week and in the past couple of weeks and they have also added a mana tool for sailing as we saw this week in global labs old moon grand prix matchmaking is coming very soon Yar matchmaking is still being worked on. Items like blackstones, food, elixirs, their abundance and dealing with how many there are will take longer to restructure since so many systems are linked to these items. They aim to reduce the item bloat in the game, but it's going to take some time. For class balance, they mentioned some of the feedback the KR forums had on recent round one class balance changes. I think they said Sage lacks stamina and protection. Sork lacks movement skills and PvP is too difficult on a Sork. And which players on the forum were saying it was hard to play Arena of Solare because they would get hard focused at the beginning of matches, they would die, and then they would feel bad for their team. Add-ons, as we know, is being reworked. That's coming. I went over that in my last test server video. Looks really good. For evasion classes, they understand that endgame spots like in Ulukita, where you take a lot of monster damage and accuracy requirements are too high, it is a struggle to grind, so they will tweak it to allow more evasion-focused classes to be able to grind effectively at these new areas. They have not exactly said how they're going to do this. I imagine by simply lowering the monster stats, that would be the easiest way. Damage numbers was talked about again because a lot of people want them. The reason they are not doing it is because of server issues when skills with a lot of hits go off that's what they're saying at least i think that's what they said they have optimized it for global labs but not for live servers so it's never happening shy tagging was talked about as well they showed a fix i believe that they have where as long as you have an awakening weapon in your shy's inventory you can tag if you use refined marnie fuel i'm not too sure what they meant by this but it sounded like that was the way to tag your shy weapon i'll have to check the official note next week when they release it black star awakening for shy won't work because it is too strong for shy and that's what they said uh, color dye presets are coming to the game once those presets get implemented they want to add color preset sharing so you can share your outfit dyes with other players they will also make some outfit items that are in normal inventory now be placed in the pearl inventory to free up some slots they talked about how when they develop new classes they want the new class to feel fresh and original 
something we haven't seen before. People have been asking for a long time for a gunner class or a gun class. And in the past, they have said, absolutely not. We're not doing this. But now they're saying that maybe one day we will have a gunner class. They say it will be a difficult class to balance. So they are worried about that aspect, but not official. They went from absolutely not. We're not getting a gunner class ever to now they said maybe one day we will have a gunner class. Ulakita will no longer become a bandit area like Valencia. This is because the treasure items that are grinded for in Ulukita is already stressful enough. Players are already dying to normal monsters here, so adding on actual players ganking you would cause too much stress. I think personally, it would also be stressful for the hunter. Imagine trying to kill someone and just getting one shot because you're an evasion class. So yeah, bandit region transfer from Valencia to Ulukita has been cancelled. They talked about some players getting banned in Korea for simply PvPing and how they were actually breaking terms of service and it wasn't because they were simply killing in the open world. They said harassing is when you continuously pursue one particular person. This banned player in particular was warned previously. Some players got upset. I don't know. It's a hot topic issue right now. For Node Wars and Siege, the cannon update that will notify you when you hit buildings as a cannoneer is almost ready. Jay had to justify himself saying he did indeed play as a cannoneer in the past. He knows what he's talking about, but giving war titles for cannoneers is not simple as some want. They're thinking of of allowing guild masters to give some sort of temporary title to cannoneers to who perform well. They also mentioned how limited GS node wars cause players to need to build a different set of gear to maximize those caps of your stats. New players are not used to this, so it can cause some confusion. They are thinking of doing something about it. No, they didn't really go into it. Just seeing how the players react, I'm guessing. But I don't think that would mean that they would outright delete caps. For more guild related items, they mentioned how the issues with guilds and the guild systems are not easy to fix fix and they take a long time, but they will work on more guild content and improvements in the future. They said they can't allow just one person to accept guild missions, those people who are in solo guilds for example. In case you don't know, if you're the only one online, you can't pick up missions. You need at least three people online. The reason they limit this is to prevent RMT. Engraved pen item family names are not changed when you choose a new family name. They can make it so we can change our engraved family names to our current one, but it would also change the engraving on items that you sold. So because of this, they can't do it. Black Spirit Adventure Dice minigame will get lower cooldown on dice and an auto roll function may get implemented while doing things like riding your mount. For farming, they're still working on finding a way to allow your crop seeds and hypha to stack in your inventory to take up less slots. Boss auras will now be exchanged from memory fragments with one NPC instead of multiple. Karanda's heart and Kudum's heart will now be be sellable on the market. Enhancing past a certain point when you need crons is difficult. They are working on a solution and will reveal the plan once they have it in place, likely next month during the Calcium Ball. Market purchase quantity limits are based on player demand data and increasing the limits could be detrimental to some players, but they will check and see if it is possible to increase the amount of logs in ore you can buy at once. Lara's daily quest in Heidel will get some improvement soon. Most likely it will be turned into a weekly quest. Crystal inventory slots are an issue if you're a life skiller. They will show us what they have planned once it is finished, likely next month again during the Calcium Ball. They are working on implementing furniture buff through the campsite or your tent. There will be another developer stream at the end of the month and the Calcium Ball event will be held December 16. There is an event starting next week that is a raffle event and is going to reward us with a J Hammer for participating, which is really good. They have also made it so J Hammers no longer have an expiration date. And that's it for this one. Let me know your thoughts on the overview today. What do you think we'll see announced for the Calcium Ball? And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.